What's up guys, this is Rick's Light signing in and welcome back to more um, Danganronpa. Right, I haven't skipped out a tiny little bit of detail, but I think we can just move straight on anyway. Oh, this is actually what we've missed out, so it's not too bad. I'll just have to take over Monokuma's voice. A body has been discovered! Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial, so your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, Not then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, so this is going to be a lot easier for me because it's going to be less voice acting then in this I'll section. Then I'll punish everyone besides the, the blackened, blackened, and the one blackened. that deceived everyone else will graduate. I will not talk over Monica. And the killer really is one of us, right? I know what, I've not done a bad job of Makoto. I'm glad I actually we've ended on this and then I can actually get everyone's of voices course. refreshed in my mind. Okay then, everyone close your eyes, and whoever did it, raise your hand. Okay. Don't be a goddamn idiot. Why the hell would they raise their hand? Before we move on and start the trial, can I ask a question real quick? Oh, she can't kill Kyoko, my beautiful... Beautiful girl. What's going on with those pictures? Too dead. Today we'll I'd find out a third. I'd awful if they got left out just because they died. Friendship penetrates even death's barrier. Yay, my nose is bleeding. How badly, I don't know. Friendship penetrates. Calm down, Hifumi. Okay, but what about that other empty seat? There were only 15 of us to begin with, so why are there 16 seats? Why not? Oh, no reason. It's just that our little courtroom here can technically fit up to 16 people. Okay, that about does it for the preamble. Get ready oh, to would. get started. First up is Got the it. case summary. Now, let the class trial begin. Let's do this. Let's find out who did it. It's about to begin. The debate to decide who we think the killer is. Anything I found, anything I noticed, I have to be ready to speak up about everything. Because this isn't just about me. Everyone's lives are on the line. The first non-stop, absolutely not. <clears throat> I know what I'm doing in this game. I'm good at this game. Well, not good, but... Okay. Evidence of a struggle. I assert right. that the one who was murdered was Miss Sayaka Maizono. Slow down, speed up. Okay. I got my buttons ready. I think my button is shoot. So it seems most likely that the killer must have taken her by surprise while she was in the bathroom. No. She didn't even get a chance to Boom! Nailed it! Yo, swamp! Still bleeding, no, 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 Sweet. Just a second, Chihiro. Try to remember how my room looked. With the way things had been damaged, I think we can definitely assume there was definitely. a struggle. Between what? I don't know how the sword can do it because it's a replica sword. I don't know if it's like... Because mine's a replica as well that I have. So it could do some damage, but it'd be blunt. So I'm assuming things could be happening with it. Between who and who? The, the killer and the, the victim? Between Sayaka and the killer, of course. Yeah. So you're saying Sayaka wasn't caught by surprise in the bathroom? Not in the bathroom, no. She must have been attacked in the main room first. Then she ran to the bathroom to try and hide. And Leon is so confused by all this. By the looks of that face. The followed her in, and that's where they finished the job. That much should have been obvious after taking one look at the scene. It shouldn't even need explaining. Well, some people are a bit dumb, Biakia. Sorry. Okay, so what's next? We need to figure out the murder weapon. Do you have to figure out the murder weapon first? Well, the crime scene was already there, so we know who died. The murder weapon, well, we, we know the murder weapon. The murder weapon's the knife. Next is the subject of the murder weapon. No, it is the murder weapon we do talk about wow. next. Wow. This is starting to sound like a real trial. Because Chihiro, it is. Not Chihiro, Ifumi, sorry. It is a real trial. We said, I mean, what was used to kill Sayaka? Really? We have to go into this? Why? It's obvious. The fucking death is in your stomach. 
So what was used to kill her? Could you not? Did you not go see Kiyotaka? No shit, Sherlock. Not hot, nah. Not random knife, no. Sorry, my G. It was a knife that was already there. Did he be used? No. I do think it was a knife, but not just any knife. I'm almost positive it was a kitchen knife. Huh? A huge kitchen knife? Yeah. After the murder. We discovered that one of the knives from the kitchen was missing. We Which did? means that knife must be the murder weapon. Oh, yeah. I guess that makes sense. You could sorta of see the weapon sticking out of her stomach. Sorta? Of? It was very obvious to see real. one, though. I could totally see that being a kitchen knife. Okay, so the murder weapon was a kitchen knife, but where does that get us? I mean, we all know Makoto killed her, right? To put Dewey, though. Makoto's room was the scene of the crime. What more proof do you need? Need more evidence than just that, though. In a real court. Hold on a second. I'm. Let's draw our conclusions after we've presented our arguments. There we go. Otherwise, what's the point of the trial? There you go. Good one, Kyoko. Thank well, you. We can talk all we want. It's not going to change that conclusion. Oh, no, it will. I don't think that's true at all. I'm sure if we keep at it, something new will reveal itself. So she kno She already knows who the killer is. There's got to be a breakthrough somewhere just waiting for us to find it. Because I know damn well I'm not the killer. I don't care about non-stop debates. Sorry, I've got all the achievements in this game. Don't need to worry about all that. Okay. Owie! I remember your name now, Owie. I don't think I'll be getting that anytime soon. So okay. I guess there's no question that the kitchen knife was the murder weapon. Definitely. But where does that get us? Yes, or somewhere. Interesting. No, it's wrong. Thank you. Walked into my freaking. You walked into your own trap there. Okay, wait. Hold on. Thank you. I didn't take the knife from the kitchen. And you've got a backup. You've got an alibi. You're gonna say you're not the killer, right? Go ahead and say it all you, you want. Well, what it if could I still have been the killer after this. What do you think, Hina? Huh? Remember I'm so what clueless. You were telling me earlier? Well, this was only a week ago. Am I reading these out normally? Well, it's a flashback, so I'll read these out normally. Well, I want to get... I want to go get... I went to go get some tea from the kitchen last night. And all the knives were still there. But when I finished my tea and went back into the kitchen to wash my glass, one of the knives were gone. So you're saying the knife disappeared while you were drinking your tea in the dining hall? Yeah. Just to be perfectly clear, the knife disappeared while you were in the dining hall, correct? Yeah, that's right. And at any point while you were there, did you ever see me come into the dining hall? Uh... Um, no, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, he definitely wasn't there. I like how she had to like, no, I don't think he was there, and then she just like, nope, definitely the wasn't, like, checking memories. The night while was in the dining room, but I wasn't there the entire time. So now we know who can take the knife, so it narrows it down to who killed In her. other words, there's no way I could have taken the knife. Okay, then what about this? Go ahead, Toko. What if the idiot swimmer girl and Makoto are in on it together, and lying to protect each other? You know what? Some got some good brains on you there, Toko. Idiot swimmer girl. Yeah, well. Oh, and more importantly, why would I get involved in something like that? Well, you've only known each other for like what a few days. Well, let's think about it. Um, day that turned up, fell asleep, spoke with her again, fell asleep. Two more free days, or one free day. You know, you should have like three or four days and now. Speaking of which, I'd like to ask the bear, if there is an accomplice, do they also become blackened? So you ask, and so I shall answer. Thank you, Monokuma. Each murder is allowed to have an accomplice, but only the one who does the killing will get to graduate. There's a few more questions I'd like them to explore. You know, what happens if you kill, but then the killer gets killed? Like, how would that work? Or what if two murders go down at the same time by two different people that they don't know about? 
because you can kill two people maximum per night. How would that rule work, say, for example, Makoto killed Kyoko and he killed Aoi, and then Byakuya killed Toka and Toko? How would that work out? I'd like to know. So, in other words, two people can work together, but one of them has no chance of profiting from it. But we didn't know that rule. Then there's no way anyone would work together, right? Not necessarily. But what if they did work together, and they just didn't know about the rule? Ugh, good grief! Enough already! No, okay? There are no accomplices in this case! Thank you, Monokuma, for the, uh... Did I say that out loud? Yeah, well, just take anyway, along a bit. I didn't go to the dining hall, and I didn't take the knife. So I'm not the killer. Okay, it it so doesn't really matter anyway if there's an accomplice or not, does it? Take the knife? Because then right then and there, they'll be like... Pfft. So... Shit. If that was the case, that there was an accomplice in this part, and then... Say, for example, we can get out of here together. If we kill, we can work in cahoots. All that had to do was Monokuma said, like, you know what, if you are an accomplice, only the killer gets to go free, then the accomplice will be like, fuck it, he did it then, I'm not fucking dying today, stupid motherfucker. That's what I mean, so, one of those things. Hina seems the obvious candidate. After all, she just said she was in the dining hall. She did. No, no way. I swear it wasn't me. Well, we've got sure. blames being shoved Could onto you Aoi. you or anyone else prove that? I can. You can. Sakura, okay. That's right. Sakura was with me the entire time I was drinking my tea. Why didn't you mention that before? Uh, I hate to have to ask, but just to be sure, Sakura's... The ogre. Me. Right. Yeah. But Ooh, then, yeah. couldn't either one of them have grabbed the knife? True, but then why would they work in cahoots now, then, after they just realized that, what's the point of working together? Actually, no. Because, um, well... What were you two doing? Just spit it out already. I stayed in Hina's room last night. Cute. I got so scared thanks to those creepy videos. I wasn't really thinking, I just asked her to stay over. And then someone's gonna probably spike up and I say blah 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 blah. We have airtight alibis. Kind of, yeah. You stayed over? Doesn't that violate hey. one of the school's regulations? We're I'm gonna try and to stay away from the spoilings of it. Because I've played this game quite a few times. To stay in our assigned room. So I don't think that's a problem. Well yeah, because if that was a problem then Monokuma would have killed Makoto and Sayaka? Osaka and Sayaka for sleeping in each other's rooms. It is a problem! A boy and a girl spending the night together? It's... it's... unwholesome! Oh shit. But... I'm a girl. You are? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry! But if it wasn't either of you, then what other possibility is there? Well, you'd see someone, did Actually, you Actually, know? there is one other possibility. Right, Hina? So why did she not spike up and say like, Oh yeah, when the knife went missing, why didn't she spike up about it? Oh yeah, that's true! One other person did come to the dining boring, hall man. while we not were Not boring, there. but annoying when the... Trying to obviously make it like, oh, like a plot twist and shit like that. Why didn't you say so in the first place? See? Well, because they're not here anymore. So is either Junko or Sayaka? Sayaka? She's the one who came to the dining hall. And then later, she wound up dead. So it was suicide! Well then, guess this one just rules off the books. Game over. Okay, so the person who took the knife from the kitchen was definitely Sayaka. I got well, Hina wasn't there, Monokuma then, stays out of it. Sayaka is the one who took the knife? Well, she did want a self-defense weapon, Makoto, don't forget. That's the only possibility. It was Jeff. And Secret option number 17. It, she was acting kind of unusual. Just in case. <laughs> when she came into the dining hall, she didn't even look at us. She just went straight to the kitchen. Not realizing that could have implemented her on the murder. Like saying, okay, she's got a knife. If someone dies with that knife, then, well, it's you. Right. As she left, she said she just wanted a drink of water, but most likely. Oh, you wouldn't have seen the knife, though, would they? So. The person who took the knife was the victim herself. I'm Good sure, job, Sherlock. I'm sure she just took it for self-defense. Me? That still could be the case, Makoto. So you're saying the knife she took 
was then taken from her and she was killed with it. In that sounds like a liable possibility, you know. In that case, you may not have taken the knife, but you still could have killed her. See, now you just dug your own grave there, Mikado. What? See? He did do it after all. Hey, now let's not blame fingers or point names. No, you're wrong. So, that's how you would twist the argument and send us all off in the wrong direction? I mean, you could try and do that. That might work. Hmm. You possess a most terrifying talent. I don't know who the killer is, and I'm surprised that they are not speaking up about it more. Damn, if I'm not doing something, they're going to blame me for the murder. Don't they understand? If they convict me, everyone's going to die. Hold on. It's still too early to decide conclusively that Makoto is the killer, wouldn't you say? Okay, okay, thank you. Because you see, if the room did belong to the killer, then they did something most bewildering. That is true. And until we unravel that little mystery, you simply can't declare that he's the killer. Bewildering? What the hell are you talking about? Oh, use your head, Mondo. No, there's hardly... There's Probably not many brain cells in there, but Something still. Something was missing from the scene of the crime that by all rights should have been there. What was that be? You know what I'm talking about, don't you? From my room, what should be there? I don't need to hear more about Hangman again, but something that should have been at the scene but wasn't. That must be the crucial point. Oh yeah, my DNA and shit. Hair, maybe? Okay, I'm gonna stick with hair. There's definitely hair with H and I. There we go. Where's the r? There we go. Game over. Now I understand. Easy peasy. I don't know how long this right. trial's gonna take. There though, wasn't so. a single hair on the floor. So the culprit removed some evidence? Yep, as you yes. should. And if I were the culprit, why would I need to get rid of all the hair in my own room? True facts. It wouldn't be unusual at all to find my hair at the crime scene if the crime scene is in my room. The reason all the hair was gone was to remove any trace that Sayaka had ever been there. True. That makes sense, does it not? No. If that were the case, they would have had to do something about the body itself. No, yeah, true. Not just her hair. That is true. I forgot about that fact. Sorry, ah. Kyoko. Yes, very true. The fuck was that true. laugh, Wario? Okay, then why wasn't there any hair on the ground? The killer got rid of it all, of course, to remove any trace that they had ever been there. Why oh, could she use they? But she knows who it is. She knows who it is. Precisely. It's simply beyond reason to believe that the room's owner and the killer are one and the same. Then Makoto isn't the culprit? No. Are you sure we can decide something so important based solely on the absence of some hair? But even if the hair was there, say for example Kiyotaka, I'm I like addressing him. If it was black hair, can I look at my people? So if I look at the people, like, so if it were black hair, say for example, Kiyotaka's a hard case, Hifumi would be on that list, Yaz a hero, possibly. Uh, if it were brown hair, there'd be a lot more people, see Celeste also. So it, if it was hair strands alone, it'd be very, very obvious to tell who were there. Very obvious. No. There are other reasons that prove why Makoto couldn't have done it. You fucking brain of an absolute angel. I would like to hear these reasons. Do you Obviously. remember anything remarkable about the bathroom at the scene? Sayaka was attacked in the main room first, then fled into the bathroom, right? Yeah, then they ran after her, got into the bathroom, and stabbed her. Exactly, got into it. And how did the killer get into the bathroom? Did they have any trouble with it? What do you mean? It's Go fairly on, certain that the killer had some trouble getting into the bathroom. They did? There was clear evidence left behind. Do you remember, Makoto? The Jimmy Jack Block thing! Well, she'll to get into the bathroom and the evidence that proves it is the object the killer broke, which was the... Is it there? Like how it says Noel, but you know, we can figure that out from that. It's very obvious. Uh, hey! 
Do I put the doorknob? The broken one? I got it. Oh yeah. Evidence that the killer had trouble getting into the bathroom. Huh? The doorknob? What doorknob? The doorknob for my bathroom. It was completely broken. Completely. See how the top part was unscrewed? And the doorknob's about ready to fall off? It is. Oh, yeah. I wonder if they took pictures on their Monokuma what, files to investigate mean? this stuff. In trying to bypass the lock, they ended up nearly removing the entire doorknob. So I like this, it's half voice acting and half this not. This is another most bewildering act The important parts are all voice acting. It that proves Makoto fight. is beyond suspicion. So what? You're saying he wouldn't break the door in his own room? Leon, use your fucking head. You, you have a male bedroom. There's no locks on male bedrooms. But if the only choice you have is to break it, you break it. There's nothing bewildering about it. You still don't see? Uh, okay, then. Replay the rule. Let's take another look at how the incident unfolded. Hopefully that will help you understand. It will do. I almost didn't, I almost didn't notice it at first, but is that the key point here? There's a bit more to learn about non-stop debates. No, thank you. I know you need to shoot white noise and trap like that, but we'll make we'll get to that point when we get to it. I've not put this on easy. Definitely put it on normal. This is only obviously taking the baby steps the for now. The took place in Makoto's room. As it should. Saika was first attacked in the main room. That's true. She then fled into the bathroom. Also true. Then the killer ran after her. And they mm. got into the bathroom. They did. At that point, the killer had to try and bust down the door because Sayaka had locked it. No, they didn't. How can Sayaka lock a male bedroom? Or male thingy? You're not thinking about the bigger the picture my here. bathroom didn't open wasn't because it was locked. They don't have locks, do they? Am I doing it wrong? Am I thinking it wrong? Male don't have locks, do they? After all, the girls' yeah. rooms are the only ones with locking bathrooms, right? Yes. Yes, now that you mention it, that is true. We get some little repeated words here. Then why didn't your bathroom door open? Because it was stuck. Perfect huh? What are you talking about? My bathroom door doesn't fit in the frame quite right. What, what, wouldn't it be the bigger plot twist if Makoto was a female? I was like, yeah, I'm a door lock, some female. Sorry. <laughs> no. Monokuma over there can testify to that. Yep. Can. True as true can be. But is it lucky? But you know, you're supposed to be the ultimate lucky student, right? Lucky. But to have such a cruddy door. There's reasons behind it, and I will explain those reasons probably if I remember it later today. Because he's not the ultimate lucky student. That person already exists. <laughs> That's not lucky at all. He's the ultimate unlucky student into the point where it's on his favor like he's unlucky but he's not super unlucky if that makes sense he's so bizarre so the reason the door didn't open was just because it was stuck but the killer didn't know that and assumed it was locked so they tore apart the doorknob to get in okay, as you do but then why would the killer even think the door was locked in the first place nice mention Everyone of that celeste should have known you can't lock any of the boys bathrooms the killer could easily make that mistake, thanks to one important detail about the scene of the crime. Would you call it the scene of the crime before it was outside the crime room? Didn't know about the door actually couldn't be locked. In other words, the important detail about the scene of the crime is because the day of In other words, the important detail about the scene of the crime that they didn't know was the crime took place I in the room. There we go. Nearly fucked up on that one. The killer must not have realized that it was my room. What? Are you saying the culprit didn't even know where he was? That's inconceivable! Nah! And we'll yet, explore it. He's absolutely right. Say what? Oh, he's not going for a long one today. Specific. What the killer didn't know was that Makoto and Sayaka had switched rooms. Exactly. Which is what led to the misunderstanding about the bathroom. If Sayaka had been in her own room, then... Then she might have been alive. And there would have been a lock on the door, and they would have had to break through. So they had no idea how unnecessary their actions were. Well, still. Ultimately, we can't know if it came open by force or simply by accident. But the killer must have been considerably confused, 
with no idea how they actually got the door opened. That's true, because I don't think you could Jimmy lock them, could you? Regardless, it was a pointless act. Wasting time trying to break down a door that wasn't locked is... Definitely something I wouldn't do, since I would have known exactly why it wasn't opening, right? Again, but you could have hid your tracks to make you believe like someone else was in there. That is a definite possibility. So the killer would have to be someone who didn't know they'd switched rooms? That's true. Then Makoto couldn't have done He it. still could have done though if you use your brain. Like, yeah, he had an alibi for the knife, but again, like Biakia brought up, the knife could have been used by me. Um, yes, it was my own room, but if I'm trying to like cover it up that I didn't do it and blame it on someone else, not all to do, is it really? Okay. To tell you. Then who did do it? I'm sorry, but I give up. Quit without saving. What about what, what, what about happened if I did do that? But hmm. what happens if we can't decide on who we think did it? You just look at the evidence. Well, why don't we just vote right now? Majority rules. You idiot! You could fucking die, you dumbass. Majority rules? You really think that's a good idea? Yeah. Our necks are on the line here. There you go. Someone seriously needs to do something. For serious. Does no one have any other thoughts or questions? It does not matter how trivial they may seem. Oh, Kyoko already knows the answer, just wants everyone else to get there. That's the point. She doesn't want to make it an open shut case because if she like knows everything but like, a bit too suspicious, like what the fuck you throwing shade on everybody? Oh, as a matter of fact, I do have one question. And what is that, Owie? Oh, you Oh, Celeste, you evil. You evil. gotta sound so disappointed. It's fine, it's fine. Just ask your question. Go ahead, oh, yeah. please. Okay, so, um... You can take your time, Owie. Well, I was just wondering, how did the culprit get into Makoto's room in the first place? That is true. Mm. Yes. How did the killer get inside? Well, it was just an open door. Maybe Sayaka just dropped the key somewhere and the culprit picked it up. That's possible, right? Eh, yeah, but that would still say Makoto's name. I don't think so. That seems way too convenient. And then you wouldn't go into Makoto's room if you had that key. So they switched rooms. So then Sayaka would have Makoto's key. If they had Makoto's key, they would have gone to Sayaka's room and tried the key, but it wouldn't have worked. So they would have just given up. Then maybe someone picked the lock? They're unpickable. Negative. If you remember, Monokuma made it quite clear that the locks are all unpickable. Yep. Fine. How about this? The killer got in the easy way. And um, what is the easy way, they Fumi? could have knocked and said they wanted to talk or something, and Miss Maizono just let him in. Maizono? Maizono. No, that can't be it either. Oh, -ho! trying to argue against me? Oh, Sounds bitch, like someone doesn't know his place. Oh, why exactly can't that be it? This is where I think Makoto's going to be wrong. Because she asked me to do something in particular because of how frightened she was. That sounds right there. There's no way Saika let someone in because... Because... Because of the switching rooms thing? Maybe? I got there we go. Because Sayaka was already scared, remember? That's why she asked me to switch rooms in the first place. I think this was an elaborate plan, though, to be fair. Same goes for you, Sayaka. No matter who it is, don't open your door for anyone. Even if I'm sure it's you, I absolutely won't open it. Otherwise, what's the point of even switching rooms? Knowing what she'd been through, I just can't However, she would have opened the door for anyone. In a real court case, this would be objection hearsay. What if her being scared was a lie? Thank you, Kyoko. Huh? Well, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? Makoto, she took a knife. I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? Ooh, there's something I want to talk to you about. Just in us two. In five minutes, come see me in my room, okay? Saga. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong room. I found a notepad during my search, and I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. As you should. These are the words that appeared. 
Oh, man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. Why not try it out? You're right! It can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. It's a very common thing, but not all, it doesn't always work, though, if you've got delicate handwriting. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique, but even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. So, so I, I O Owie even have just confirmed that if she ever killed someone, I'm rad to rip something down the piece of paper. She'd rip it off first and then write on it. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Yeah. Which means only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. That is true. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka who. And Sayaka's name was on the piece of paper, so. So, Makoto, did you write this? No, I didn't. And it's easy to tell if they did or not. It's like write down a piece of like the sentence and how it of goes. Of course you didn't. Because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's yeah, signature. Yeah, it wouldn't call it a signature, but still. The note. Sayaka wrote it. But why? Why would she write that? The note was like her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. And that was her downfall. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what one man could resist? Probably Bianca you could resist. I believe fucking Shaggy Doo over there would have resisted because he's clueless anyway. Um, Taco Toka? Ta Talk would have resisted because he's the ultimate like moral compass so you wouldn't have done that either. Uh, you would I'm sure creep. Leon, I don't see him after Pop Flat, I don't give a shit about that person, so why the fuck would I go? So Of course it's awesome. I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. Exactly again with Hifumi. See, everyone has the reason to say no to the piece of paper. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Well, huh? it's, it's a possibility you what could trace you down, say though. That? <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Yes, please, Queen. Very well, then. Pay attention. I know I don't do her accent correctly, but I know she has like that German kind of accent. You hear it sometimes. I want to listen to you very carefully, Miss Celestia Ludenberg. Don't have Okay. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, Makoto, correct? Makoto, yep. But in the note, the place they were asked to come to, it specifically says, my room. It does. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Where Makoto would have been. Exactly. The room that Makoto Is this enough evidence? No. Yes, it is. Enough to concede. Very nice. The concede. nameplates on my and Sayaka's rooms got switched. They got switched? Yeah, they did. That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. So this is the thing that would make that I can't remember what happened or not, but I feel like Two possible cases both make sense. So either Sayaka slash Makoto would have swapped the names because like just to make sure, make sure check the nameplates, which does make sense considering Sayaka said check the nameplates. The other possibility is that with some magic, which is shown in this series quite um, sometimes, it will show you basically Makoto's in this room, so Makoto like checks his DNA. Oh, Makoto's in this room, but Sayaka's leaving in this room, so it's Sayaka instead. And the nameplate on Makoto's room had Sayaka's. It did. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Indeed it was. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Exactly. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other. So switching the nameplates would be no problem. And easy, the one easy. who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you. Right, Makoto? Definitely not. Right? Okay, then who did it? 
Well, who switched the nameplate? So we killed it. There's only one person who could have switched the nameplate. The only other person who knew that we had switched. Scott! Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. Yeah. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. Yeah. You can also infer as much from her note. It does. Make sure to double check the check things. There's something I want to talk to you about. Just us two. In five minutes, come see me in my room. Check the nameplates to make sure you don't get the wrong if room. Okay. She specifically okay? tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. Also true. But why would she switch them in the first place? For an elaborate she scheme, Chihiro. To come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you've switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? Because... There's a reason why. Obviously you need to try and get away with murder to see what's going off on the outside world, correct? So if you kill, you get away with murder. And get away with murder. You go into the world like nothing's happened. But other than that, there's nothing else you can go for. To understand that... Right. We first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. We do. We knew there was a struggle and that's about it. That's where the answer lies. It does. What happened then was probably... Whoever she invited over came in and attacked her! Randomly though? We figured it out! We know who did it! Whoever she invited over is the culprit! Yes, but we don't know who she invited over! But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot! Thank you, Mom. Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Definitely. Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Possibly. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? We do. That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? At some point, yes. Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Uh, I'll let Makoto explain Saika it. suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. But how the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Because the evidence adds up there, Leon. The reason I know Saika's wrist was broken in the fake sword with the fake sword is because when you look at her wrist, there's no doubt that it's broken. So I'll just click on it. I got it! There you go. All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen. There's something glittery there. See? Something gold! My favorite color! Is is that gold? Oh, you bet it is, bitch. It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. Nom, nom, you nom, barely nom. have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. Yeah. And there's some on her wrist because... I got it! Because she got hit with the sword right there on her wrist! That was very obvious. Thank you, Captain Stately Obvious. I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. But does it, Hifumi? We're still not a step closer to who the fuck did it. All right. Then it's about time to solve this mystery. What happened in my room? And what led Saika's death? That's what we need to make clear. Uh, no, because there's white noise now, I think. I don't think it can stop the white noise, but white noise is still be there. It still be doing the do. Oh, there's three now, okay. When the fighting broke out. When the fighting broke out. The culprit grabbed the sword. Yes. And that's when the first blow was dealt. Mmm. Sword-based sneak attack. No, it was definitely... And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist. So she tried to fight back. She, she did? grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her too. And they killed her with it. And that's that exactly would make sense. what happened. Red Flicker Sword Sheath was damaged, wasn't it? So I need the sheath. Yeah. The sheath. I need the sheath. 
Get up a little bit. Is that the one I need to fight against? There we go. I'll take care of my freaking slowing down and speeding up things. Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. You might be correct. Why not? Because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? Oh, there's a massive there's indentation a gash in somewhere. It. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Very sharp. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. It was. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. We will do one day. The sword was used first. There wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you were going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? Not necessarily, because with some certain swords, the sheath can actually be used as a weapon. So if you are in mid-combat or someone's about to go for it, you can either quickly draw it if you're attacking first, or you can surprise them with it if there's a charge, so like to throw the, the sheath first and then go for a swing because they're distracted. That's true. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Not useless as shit, though. Quite actually quite clever. You can use the sheath as a... As a of the club. Okay, You're pretty so tough. How did the sheath get damaged? We'll explain this if, if you got me. attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. As you would. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. You're done so soon. You're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife. Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. Which would make it Sayaka. So here's how it all played out. Explain to me your dumbness. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. Then that doesn't make any sense why her wrist got broken. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself, but then the culprit took that from her too. Why would she need, why would need the sword first? And after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Your elaborate scheme doesn't make no sense. Sorry, but I don't think Saya can use the sword to defend herself. No. What? How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. Yep. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. Her hands are not gold. If you want to use the sword, which part of your body would you have to? Her palms, actually. I got it! Palms would make sense. You're talking about her palms, right? Uh, uh, hymns and stuff. The palms of her hands were perfectly clean, so I don't think she ever picked up the sword. Nope. How can you know that just by looking at her palms? We've explained this, Owie, because of the gold dust. Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do, in fact, if you look, I you'll notice really? that sorry. a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It is, so it's obviously two-handed. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. But they've obviously washed there's off There's really something. no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Unless she wore gloves. Maybe but she I don't think washed I do. her hands after she had escaped into the bathroom. She wouldn't have time. Sorry, but I don't think so. Because her wrist would have still been... She would have got it off her wrist too. Why do you say that? Is it because you think I'm ugly? It has nothing to do with it. No, that's not it at all. There's no way I could wash the gold coating off hands because there's a certain regulation that. Oh yeah, the water doesn't work off. Work. I got it. The water According doesn't work to the at Monokuma that time. Sayaka's time of death was around 1:30 a.m. That's way after the cutoff point. It's like three hours after. In other words, Four? at night time. Three. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at night time, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower. It's been four days, you dirty bitch. Oh my. Calm down, Hikumi. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Alright, no need for name calling. I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. Insult, obviously. So anyway, Sayaka yes, never touched the sword. The abuse. That means the killer is the only one who used the sword. Exactly. But hold on. That's right. And the one who damaged the sheet with the kitchen was... Sayaka, well done. There's no one else who could be there. Only Sayaka. Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? But we already said that the attack started with... 
The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. Then the one who attacked first was... Miss Sayaka! Sorry if you can't hear me very well. I'm judging my legs. Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. She was not. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. Do you blame the woman? She wanted out! She took the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And yes. it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attack without provocation. Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Indeed. Which brings up another point. Nakuto, Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Yes. Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms was to blame it on you. <laughs> was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility. I need to bust open a cat monster. Sayaka wanted to on me? Of course she did. That but Kyoko was thinking something else. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. Makoto, not Makoto. But for that to work, the target had What's to that, be that out pronounced? while still keeping the room swap a secret. That's true. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. Exactly. So all that's why she switched the names? Most likely. But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? Eh, yeah, it does actually. You're right, because it got caught in shit. Even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. But where's the evidence? I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. I'm sure Sayaka realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Exactly. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. That's true. A totally forgettable kid, or a national superstar. Who are you more likely to believe? Bad point, Toko. Wait, then you were saying she had this all planned out? Definitely. Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She picked a fight with the wrong person. She launched her attack with the knife. Then found herself under attack in turn. Indeed. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she planned to murder. Sadly, that is the case. Just hold Sorry on! That can't be true! Makoto, stop being in denial. You're gonna go for the fucking five stage degree within seconds. Because. Because. Denial first. Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument. Thank you, Monica, for putting us back on track. Super boring right now. Come on, hurry up and decide who did it. Wouldn't it be awful if I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time? Wonder how much time there is in this case. Oh yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. And who we think did it? Who we know who did right it? Right now, you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. Obviously. Sayaka, no Sayaka. He, I'm surprised Hifumi hasn't got an idea who it is. Um, but I know Kyoko knows. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. But she's trying to get everyone to that point, so then, like I've said before, so they don't automatically think it was her who did it. Is, is it really all over? Obviously I'm committed to finding out who killed her. But what can I do? I mean, as far as clues go, there's nothing left. There's one more! There is one more. There's two more actually. There's the dying message too. I thought about that one. More thing about the broken glass. Say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? Ah, oh, fuck you! I'm having that one. No, it's wrong. Let's crack this case wide open. There still might be one clue left. Two. Sayaka's dying He's forgetting about the shattered glass and the burnt piece of fabric. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There yeah. must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Well, before we get too far into that, 
I need to ask. Okay, Can so we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? Yeah, there's blood on the finger. A fatal wound. Right wrist. The left index finger. God! There you go. Her left index finger had blood on it. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. Like, just, just imagine how powerful that would be. Well, not powerful, but how hurt that must be. Like, you're just being stabbed. Like, you're slowly bleeding out from your fucking gut. And you have enough strength and energy to wipe it on yourself. Like, get in there, get the blood. Screaming nearly in pain and then slowly writing out 11037 on the wall behind you. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Sure. I think we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still, what the heck do those numbers mean? 11037? I just want to crack this case wide open because if you look between the two ones, there's something else. Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. N no, that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, but I don't see any kind of meaning in these numbers. I'm not very smart than I am. Of course. It's because they're not numbers. If you sure already knew that, then she's not like saying because it got brought up. So I saying, right, look, now we can get on with it. Oh, yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? No, it's just... I'll look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Okay. Don't these first two, one one, look less like two numbers and more like one letter? There you go. Ah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was one one, but looking at it now... Nice one. You could also read it as an N. Whoa, you might have finally just said something worth a shit. <laughs> gray cells? You talking about your sperm cells? I know you're a bit fucking creepy for me, so I don't know what the fuck you're saying half the time. But even if that really is an N, N037, doesn't make any more sense than before. It makes a bit more sense. Rotate the image 180 degrees. See, now she's getting everyone to the conclusion. I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue part and right onto who did it. Yep. So, whose name did she write? You're a book artist or author. Word. You should know this, Toko. Tiger's eye message reveals a realist killer name. If you turn the air image 180 degrees upside down, it should become crystal clear. Well, it's only one person. Where is the guy who should be freaking out right about now? Hey, you're just skeptical at the moment. Here's my answer. You're the only one. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. Super easy, super simple case. If you turn the message around... I want to try and listen out for something today. Well, no, not today, but in a letters, future episode. L -E -O -N. See, now look at that. It doesn't look like an N anymore. It looks literally just as like Leo 11. It's weird, but the other way around it looked more like a 11. L E O N. Or more accurately, Leon. What? what the hell are you talking about? It's just a coincidence. Doubt it. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. No, it's not random at all. Random squiggles. Random squiggles. So he says. She, wrote that she was looking at it as well upside down, down, bleeding out. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally, and had to write upside down as it were. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. Okay. Oh, yeah. Th that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. Nah. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. I mean, he's not said anything, but now he's being accused. He's like, 
nearly screaming at him. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? Uh, the crystal ball? The thing that I found on the ground in front of the incinerator, right? So it was the crystal ball or the burnt piece of fabric? I'm going to say the burnt piece of fabric because that seems more... There you go. I think either one would have worked because the crystal ball was still there. The but I mean, it should have been good put there anyway. Laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. Yep. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. It like one piece burned off and got left behind. The killing thing and the needed. killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? If you would you mind saying you're some of your pieces? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button up. Nope, there's um, y'all the hero next to you, Byakuya next to that, you. That's right, there are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. Yeah, similar. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough. But there are some other points that may reveal the truth. There is. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. It's all going to come so clear. The burnt remains of the bottom shirt, which the killer wasn't able to get rid of. There's something about it we need to pay attention to. How it was disposed of. You look closely at how the shirt was disposed of. We should be able to figure out who the killer is. Indeed. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? Yes. And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on either. Yes. You need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So, you so the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> oh. No, that's wrong. There was another way to use the incinerator without being the one on cleaning duty. And that's exactly what proves that Leon is the real killer. Are we in a hangman's gambit or are we in a... Okay. The shattered crystal ball. Okay. The trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? Okay. So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the Fumi. The person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy it. Is that right? No. There it is. Because you have to throw that bitch with all your strength and yell and yeet. Hold on. Can you imagine if you're doing that? I know how someone could dispose of the evidence. So in the middle of that one, who the fuck does yell yeet? Obviously you can't hear him, but still. Like Heenan, for example, going out to the door, was like, who the fuck is yelling yeet in there? <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> but if you can't get past the gate, you couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Well. Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it, some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... But how would you use it? The glad to use a glass ball in a certain way. Divine is it? <laughs> oh, praise be Jeebus. The took at the incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. Hell yeah. All they had to do was hit that switch and the incinerator would come to life. Hell yeah. Someone threw that through a gap in the gate? And who do you think could do Remember that, Hifumi? Remember what you said before, Hifumi? Monokum will not let anyone in. Huh? Someone turned the incinerator. Very strange. I'm quite certain it was off the last time. Off last time I was down here. Perhaps it was the work of a fairy. The fool had the key. So the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate. Because they're all magical and Once a fairy. Once they gotten the incinerator going, all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in. Hey, come on! What the hell is this? 
All you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. Indeed. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. Yeah. If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Yeah, that's true. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? So, if he killed, because I don't have any, like, detective stuff here to test on blood streaks. So, what he simply could have done was taken the knife with him, wipe it on Saika's shirt so he doesn't drip any blood, take it back to his room, and because his shirt was bloodied, all he had to do was cut himself across his wrist. Yes, I know it's inflicting self-harm, but it wouldn't have pointed to him if he just disposed of it that way, and then said to so threw me the following morning, hey, I want to dispose of this shirt. Um, I was making a elaborate scheme, I'm going to tell you a secret, don't let anyone else know, and then just throw it away. Obviously, if it came to the slight saying, you're the only one with blood on your shirt, so it was a cover-up that could have happened, but when they found that body, eventually, it may or may have not have happened, because I could still have been missing and stuff like that, so, you know. Maybe it would have come out the same way, but it was an easy way to get rid of the get rid of evidence. The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? Oh, they could. That, that's right! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Difficult, absolutely. Possible? I don't, I don't think so. Because the killer is... Well, let's look at all the other ones. Right, the ultimate fanfic creates the ultimate baseball ball. Oh, they're, they're not just funny answers. What are the funny answers? The killer is the ultimate baseball star. Isn't that right, Leon? Do you Leon! Have any idea yeah. how stupid you sound right now? No idea. A target 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. Nah. You can't be serious. I, I, I'm not the killer! Okay, is this a ball? These goddamn shipper brains have got it all wrong, I'm telling you! No You God. still won't admit it? Okay, then. Kyoko, would you want to crack this case wider open? Makoto. Go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. We can do and this. with that, we can end this. Do you like the Listen closing to statement? What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. Yeah. But all the questions have been answered, and the truth has been revealed. Now here's what happened. Is it the closing? Oh, it's the closing argument? I thought I had to, like, do the rebuttal first. Okay, so... Oh, I hate doing these. Right, lint roller, lint roller, lint roller. That would be after after she died, right? Right, so that would be there. Okay, after Jimmy Jack the door. I like doing it like this, then it makes it easier to understand. So she bursts in because she Jimmy Jack the door. She's locked it. Okay, he's already burst in at that point. So he needed this then to Jimmy open it. Jimmy open, right? Possibly, right? She's got stabbed. So while she's dying in her own blood, she's writing Leon on the wall. There, maybe? I don't see her hand there at all. Right. Here we are. Okay, he's throwing the crystal ball, which turns on the incinerator, which is there. Um. He's not thrown it yet, so that must go there. Okay, next page. Okay, this is going into Sayaka's room. Do we have any more to the left? Oh, we have more to the left, great. Uh, okay, let's start from where... Uh... Right, so... Stab, stab, stab. I don't know if it's going from right to left, so it would be... Well, it would be him entering the room, right? That's obvious to see. He went for this thing that was behind them, so that would have been there. She went for the stab. He deflected it. He attacked her arm. Then she broke the wrist. Would she have dropped the knife? No, because the knife seems there, so that one is not a part of this. Okay, that can go there. 
Right, the next one is dropping the knife and the incineration. Okay, the knife's sort of been dropped, so there's nothing else to be said there. And then the last piece of the evidence is the incineration of the jacket. Which is there. Here's See if I'm right. What happened? We'll find out if I'm wrong or not. But I should be I okay. I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. As you should. Last night, the killer went to the room Sayaka was in. In other words, my room. Exactly. From what we can tell, Sayaka invited that person there intending to kill them. She attacked them with the knife she'd taken from the kitchen earlier. Wow. Good, well, that one right, good. Very good. But then something happened that she wasn't prepared for. Self-defense. They grabbed the fake sword I put in my room and fought back. I like how the unlucky part of that is the sword ended up saving his life in the end as well. During the struggle, a strike from the sword broke Sayaka's right wrist. It did. And that's when she lost her grip on the kitchen knife. I dropped it to the floor. Finding herself cornered, Sayaka panicked and ran into the bathroom. Close it behind it to be safe. The killer went after her, but couldn't get the bathroom door open. So he would have gone back to his own room to get his own knife. What they didn't know was that my bathroom door got stuck easily, and there was a trick to opening it. Sayaka knew about that because I told her, but of course the killer had no way of knowing. No, they didn't. So instead, the killer forced the door open, took the kitchen knife, and stabbed Sayaka. But with what strength she had remained, Sayaka left. So it would have been an message. easier investigation as well. Say, for example, this lock's been damaged with. So. Let's go around all the boys' rooms and see what could be used to Jimmy. Obviously a knife could also unscrew things, but just in case. To keep the killer from noticing, she wrote it on the wall behind her. Yeah, she did. And with that, all her strength was gone. She died. With Sayaka dead, the killer quickly began destroying the evidence. To stop him from being First, they took off their shirt, which was covered in their victim's blood. True. Then they took the lint roller in my room and cleaned up the entire area. That must have taken hours to do. They wanted to make sure they got rid of any trace they'd ever been in. Afterwards, Magical. the killer headed to the trash room to destroy their bloody shirt. They tried to burn the shirt using the incinerator there, but the trash room this was been cool if it was animated. Especially sturdy. So don't like the storyboard like preventing a access to the incinerator. Comic book. So they came up with a plan to use Hero's crystal ball, which he left in the laundry room. Again, got lucky with that. So what would he have done if he didn't have that? Would he have used an apple instead? The killer managed to throw the ball through the gap in the gate and hit the incinerator switch. Oh no, yeah, she's not allowed to go into the cafeteria are you so he wouldn't have been able to do it you got very lucky with that being there for any normal person that'd be an impossible throw but the killer had the confidence to take a shot i don't think it would have been an impossible throw makoto but it would have been very unlikely that you're going to do it like twice on the trot that's because the killer was the ultimate baseball star that's the only way it would have worked the crystal ball Thrown with absolute precision, hit the switch on the incinerator, Dead. which Dead. then quickly roared to life. Rawr. There you go. Was it thrown away, burning away. Having destroyed the final piece of evidence, they left the area with, I imagine, a sigh of relief. But there was one thing they missed. There's a few things they missed. She wasn't a perfect throw then, were it? They thrown into the fire, burnt away, and fell out of the incinerator. 
interesting. The killer didn't notice this, and so left behind a piece of indisputable evidence. Isn't that right, Leon? Leon? Leon! Help! It would appear that Hero simply forgot his crystal ball in the laundry room. You went there to try and wash the blood out of your shirt. Ah. And that's where you saw it, right? That's a good idea, to be fair. I didn't think of that Seeing one. Seeing the ball, you thought of a way to take care of everything. I didn't think of that way, Makoto. Thank you. So, Leon, do you object to anything that's been said? Do, do you, Mr. Sith? I don't want to move the microphone. I do apologize. Hell yes, I object. Of course I do. I object. I object. I object. Is it all hearsay there, Leon? Just a bunch of Without proof? Theories. You need evidence. Where's the evidence? Without evidence, it's all bullshit. It's bullshit and I refuse to acknowledge it. Yes, but if they put you down for murder and it's wrong, then, well, well then, you I lose guess anyway? I this is as good a, a time as any to present the evidence that proves you did it. Ah. Koto, I believe you're in possession of that evidence. I am? I have the evidence. Your first bullet time battle is about to begin. When I don't need this, but... The screws from the doorknob, they didn't use anything from your room to do it. Oh, yeah. See, this is what I was talking about. They had to go to other rooms to figure it out, and anyone's would have opened to match it all up. Instead, they must have used something that belonged to them. Exactly. Hmm. I refuse to acknowledge you. You're stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid! Is that how you would say that with the stupid, 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 stupid? I have to show indisputable evidence that Leon is the killer. I need to figure it out. It's not that hot of a day yet, but thankfully, I like doing this bit. It's nice. Where's your proof? You kidding me? I know how to do this now. Not a chance. It wasn't me. Very hard in the second one, though. Shut up. Come on, we got it. You kidding me? Not a chance. I'll let you go free away, but not full. Where's your proof? You Any more? Not a chance. Get free on that one. Me. Come on. Stupid. Two. You lie. Three. Four. Shit. Shut up. You me? I got too giddy with it. Where's your proof? Shoot the toolkit. This will prove it. This will prove it. Right, moving my phone. I'm trying to get comfortable because I've been recording for an hour and like need to stretch my legs a bit. But the game needs to continue going onwards. There we go. I wonder what kind of tool the killer used to remove. A knife can do it if you have the right shape. Like a normal butter knife could work, depending if you can like if it's like a deep groove or not. Obviously, it's a fill. It both face a Phillips, not a flat. So it had to be a screwdriver, right? Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure the tool kits we got each had one inside. And that must be what he used. There aren't any other tools anywhere. You can still use a knife. But the tool kit in my room had clearly never been used. And it was apparent that no one else used theirs, right? It's because the culprit didn't know it was your room. They thought they were inside because room. What a pair of scissors still do it? Because I think there's a pair of scissors in the sewing kit. Well, because it, well, it would be sewing scissors, wouldn't it? Only the boys got tool kits. So the killer naturally assumes there wouldn't be one in there. Yeah. Okay. Then whose toolkit did the killer use? Well, the only one's got the room to. Stupid, stupid, stupid! It had to be their very own toolkit. Of course. Stupid, 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 stupid! Leon, would you mind showing us your toolkit? If I'm right about this, then the screwdriver will show some evidence of being used. What do? Stupid, stupid, stupid! Right, let's have a look then. What's he gonna say, say now? You used it for something else. You'll have to explain exactly when, where, and why. There you go. And let me say this right now. I lost it isn't an excuse at this point. Nope, that just confirms it. Stupid. Stupid. What are you gonna say about it, Leon? Have you given in? Are you saying stupid to yourself so, now? You have no rebuttal? Then it would seem we are finished here. By the sounds of it, yes. Okay, so you might be able to hear a fan in the background, and I've set it to like I've got a timer which sets to two hours. So when that goes off, 
Right, recording's done. That's a nice little timing frame, actually. It's very good, like saying, oh, I've got to record for an hour, let's put on an hour, and then we're done. It's a nice little thing. Hey, you want a Kuma coins? I don't need those. I really don't. Are we talking about it to normal, or is it still dialogue? Looks like you've reached yep. your verdict. Then are we ready I know to very soon I'll have to like, read myself. You all have a lever in front of you. Lever. Use it to make your selection. Oh, just to remind you all. Abstaining. Make triple sure you vote for someone. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be punished for something so minor, right? I mean, you don't have to vote. You can abstain, but. Okay. Confirmed. Then let's get excited. I think this is the majority vote. Who so. will be chosen as the blackened? Will you make the right choice? I will ask also know if like it's a split one. the room like people like believed in shit like well we don't know who did it. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? I'd also like it like say for example, um, in V three there's a character who who's called the ultimate survivor. He survived a previous a previous killing game. I'd like to play from his story and see how he won. I feel like that'd be a very good one to know. Of course, that's a bit of a spoiler for number three, but hopefully things work out in our favour for that one. Wow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh-ho! Looks like you got it right on the money! The Blacken in this case, the one that killed Sayaka, was none other than Leon Kawada! Hold on a second. Leon. Leon, did you really kill Sayaka? But... I don't believe it. You son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. What the hell is wrong with you? I, I didn't have a choice. Thank you. It was kill or be killed. So that's why... I killed her first. None of you are any different. One wrong step and you'd been one standing there here. It was complete chance that I wound up like this. You expect me to just accept my death? Everything's gonna become clear. The decision we made was right after all. But when I think about that, honestly, I'd be better off if, I'd, if we'd been wrong. Because if what we came up with was the truth, then that truth is that Psyche was trying to free me. But even if that's true, I can't say she was wrong. After all, the mastermind. It's all because of that video. Even I couldn't handle what I saw in there. If I was her, and the video actually had something to do with me, I couldn't imagine. Now we're trapped here with no way out. They're probably waiting for me. I can't afford to be stuck in here. The one thing that was more important than her than anything else, her dreams, her friends. To have to see something like that happen to them, and Sayaka. I... I did whatever it took to reach that dream. I mean it. Even some things that weren't so pleasant. And that's why Sayaka, for the friends that meant so much to her, that's why she betrayed me. So, when she said... No matter what happens, please always be there for me. I need you on my side. <laughs> oh. See? There we go. She was lying to me from the very beginning. She was using me. Is that why she talked to me in the first place? I I guess I'll never know. Because there's nothing I can do to ask her what she was thinking. Once you're dead, that's it. <laughs> Boy, howdy! The entertainment industry must sure be terrifying, huh? I mean, to try and kill someone just because of those relationships? She seems so nice and lovely on the outside, but inside, she descended into pure madness. What did you say? Phew. I understand. Really, I do. Yup, yup. You're in utter despair thanks to Saika's betrayal, right? Compassion, intimacy, love. The stronger those feelings, the stronger the despair when they collapse. So I'll scream with us. It's all your fault. 
It's like being forced to do something like that. All of it. Everything. It's all your fault. Suddenly in a frenzy, I lunged at Monokuma. But... That's enough. Thank you. As angry as I was, Kyoko latched onto my own without hesitation. Her grip was like iron, strong enough I was sure it would leave a bruise. Calm down. If you really want to make our enemies pay for what they've done, you need to let it go for now. <clears throat> Damn it! Ba -bum, ba -bum. Now that was a close one! I thought for sure you were going to give me a good walloping! Just barely avoided punishment you did. Yes indeed! Now then, since you so magnificently revealed the identity of the killer during the class trial, the blackened Leo Kawatawa will receive his punishment! Pun punishment? You mean... execution? Wait a second! I didn't have a choice, I had to kill her! Yeah, that's it! I was facing myself in the heat of the moment. It was self-defense! Okay? How exactly was it self-defense? Mm. When you forced your way into the bathroom, did you or did you not use your very own toolkit? After she shut herself in the bathroom, you went out of your way to head back into your own room. Then you came all the way back, broke into the bathroom, and killed her. Am I wrong? Do you understand? You had any number of chances to stop what you were doing, but you chose not to. Is it not because you had an unclouded intent to commit murder? So that's no, funny. that's not... Stop it! I've had enough of this. Oh. oh, are you sure? You were closer to her than anyone, were you not? He killed your precious Saika. Do you understand? I can't say Leon is to blame. Of course, I don't plan on blaming Saika either. Because... Because the one to blame is him. Swa? If it weren't for you, this would have never happened to Saika or Leon. We shouldn't be fighting each other. We should be fighting against the one who put us in this situation, the Mastermind. Oh, ho! Did you awaken to your sense of justice? Well, it just so happens that there's nothing more unethical than a wavering sense of justice. After all, it's people with that sort of mentality that perpetuate war all over the world. Is that the kind of justice that's awakened within you? Just shut up. Okay, well anyway, more importantly... Thrills, chills, kills! Let's hurry up and get to what everyone's been waiting for. The punishment! I'm begging you, please, don't do this! Hey! No more begging, no more excuses. You must pay the penalty for breaking the rules. Society demands it. Stop, please! I'm glad they're doing his voice for me. Now then, I've prepared a very special punishment! For Leon Kawada, the ultimate baseball star! No, 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 no! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! I could never replicate that. That has to be said by Monokuma or Monokuma no! alone. I has no idea I was going to die. And now we got to see a cutscene. Bonk! <clears throat> That's a Gatling gun! Why are you fucking doing that again? <laughs> Thousand blows. Just imagine how this, how bad this would feel. Yeah, it's coming out like a Gatling gun, but other than that... Like, that's coming out with some force. The blood vessels that part the broken bones. You would literally turn to mush with, within yourself. It's disgusting. And it's only just beginning, too. It's grim. Like, you'd be dripping with blood and everything. Like, be spitting out of your mouth. And most likely, you would be bleeding because you'd been pounded that much. It would have actually broken the skin, too. Well, then. Then Leon Kawada is dead. What we saw, that was the true face of despair. I mean, if you can't call it that, 
What else could we call it? Extreme! We can keep that one. Man, my adrenaline is pumping right out of control! Accurate. Whoa. Whoa, what's going on? I can't take it. I can't take this anymore. Do we really have to keep doing this? I just can't take it. Well, well hey, if you don't like it, <laughs> all you gotta do is swear to cut all ties with the outside world and accept living here forever. But that's only if every single one of you can get on board with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you laugh. You can have that one. Damn Man, you. fuck you. The fuck are you doing all this evil shit to us? What the heck? Evil? You make it sound like I'm some dark, awful, secret society type of guy. Hey, or in this case, a dark, awful, secret society type of bear. Well. So why are you putting an upstanding young citizen like me through such a grueling ordeal? Hey, um... It seems like you're trying to use common sense to make sense of something that doesn't make sense. That's like trying to put a mile in a scale. I just don't think it's possible. Hey, I don't think what you're saying is what I'm saying quite fit together. You piece of shit. I don't know who you are, but I'm gonna pound your ass into the ground. <laughs> you must really hate me to get so angry, huh? But if you do that, you're barking way up the wrong tree. <laughs> what happened, happened because more than one of you decided you wanted to get out, right? No matter how much time passes, you can't get free of your regrets from the outside world. You're to blame. Of course we can't free from the outside world. Being trapped in this insane place. Hmm. hmm. You're trapped, are you? Well, I'm sure once you learn all the mysteries of the school, your thinking will change for sure. You'll think, boy, is it so wonderful how we all get to live here forever? What, does this mean? what are you trying to say? Hey. I feel like there's some deeper meaning hidden in that. Just like before. Anyway, let's get back to the Blackens punishment. That's that's what everyone is waiting for after all. Hey. When you say everyone, who exactly you're referring to? <laughs> Sorry, I said everything I got to say. I need to save some fun for later. <laughs> and just like that, he was gone. He left us there, overwhelmed by nightmare turned reality. Facts though. Even after he was gone, we stood there forever, unable to move. Actually, no, it wasn't that long, I think. Everyone just lost their sense of time. We were all too scared. Scared of being alone. No one even tried to speak. Their faces were stone, their voices dead. But it was in that moment. Just a second. Makoto, can I talk to you for a second? She moved in close and whispered into my ear. Makoto. Before we head back, there's something I want to talk to you about. It's about Saika, isn't it? I'm surprised you figured it out. Listen. I told you before the class trial started. You had to figure out the mystery of this case yourself. You wanted me to realize how Saika betrayed... You need to read who sang the line. You wanted me to realize how Saika betrayed me by myself, didn't you? The thought never even crossed my mind. I feel like such a fool, becoming such an easy target like that. It's true. So I committed to double-cross you. That's a fight that you can never change. But even till the very end, she wasn't sure of her decision. That's why, as she lay dying, she was thinking of you. She was thinking of me? You can't just say something like that. I mean, there's no way you can know that. Only Saika would know for sure. And we can't ask her now. However... Even if you can't ask her, you can infer it, don't you think? Her final thought was how she could protect you. What? So... The fact that she used her last ounce of energy to leave her dying message proves it. If she didn't care what happened to you, she never would have left that message. Well, maybe she just wanted to get back at the person who had killed her. Certainly. That's certainly one possibility. But I don't think that was the, that's what it was. Anyway... She was uncertain. She wasn't sure she could kill someone or deceive you. Which is why her plan failed. Her hesitation attracted a failure. Right. It's almost iconic when you think about it. Why are you telling me all this? Because you're the kind of person who can overcome this. Because you can move past the deaths of your friends, Saika and Leon, and keep moving forward. Correct. Without someone like that, the others would never be able to break free of such desperate situation. Move past their deaths? That's... I could never do that. 
No. I'm going to carry on them with the rest of my life. How could I possibly move past something like that? Leon. Sayaka. I'll carry them with me forever. I'll carry their memories wherever I go. So instead of forgetting them, you're choosing the hard road. <laughs> well, I have high expectations for you. I said that she revealed the smallest hey. smile. By the way, I have to admit, I'm curious. How did you know I wanted to talk to you about Sayaka? Oh, well. I'm psychic. What? Huh? Kidding, I just have pretty good intuition. End of chapter one. Shall we leave it there? Seeing as we end of chapter one, we can start chapter two with a nice little fresh smile on our faces. Three's dead, got 12 more remaining. Would make sense to leave it there, right? Because it does say to be continued. So, I'm going to leave that there for today with this video of a Danganronpa because that seems like a nice ending point, I believe. Yeah, we're not really going for a two hour play here. I will probably aim for it one day, but you know, it's all there. We, we can have like a nice fun time and we can, you know, have a nice play from when chapter two begins next week. But as for now though, that is all there is going to be for today. And as always, this is Rick's Light signing out. So let's cue the music.